from Eddie King Gymnasium on the campus of the University of Charleston, located in Charleston, West Virginia. It's University of Charleston basketball. First one. Keir finds LaPierre down the floor. She lays it off for Rouse Culp. Scores. We've seen that from Marlene LaPierre. She is a good pass. Perry, Perry gets stuck in the corner against a double team. Finds LaPierre spinning. Shot up and good. Run and does on her own. Flips it up ahead to Scott, who beats Glenville up the floor and scores. And Tiffany the, with 10. Tiffany showing a lot of heart. I have enough for Charleston to retain possession. Here's Kataya turning, shooting, scoring. Yeah, that's a great shot. Advantage of that. Bad shot. No, nice pass. Kier one hand to Rousko. Holds the ball high above her head. Now just dribbles forward. Will stop from five feet and bank it in. Not sure if she called that bang, but clearly it was open. She throws it cross court to Davis. Davis, seven footer on the way. Good. Boy, how accurate is Kier to Davis. Looks at the clock. 11. Kier, top of the key. Over to Ross. Eight. Back to Kier. Over to Davis. She's going to drive. Loses the ball. Keeps it in bounds. Two. Up with a shot. <laughs> by coach Sherry Wynn, UC women's team. Coach, I asked you about the Glenville State game at the beginning of the season, and you thought that your young players would adapt to the style. Glenville, you were right on about that. Well, I think, I think their style of play is better for this group because they don't have to think. Like, we don't have to think. And we're not very smart yet in terms of, like, defending screens and all that kind of stuff. And so... You know, if we just got to just run down the floor and, and shoot quick shots and layups, then that was perfect for us. We didn't have to think. Yeah, you guys found really a lot of gaps in the in the middle especially, and even with the shot blocker, but you were just able to stay away from her enough to get off good shots. Right. I mean, I thought that I thought we did exactly what we asked them to do in terms of tempo. We told them we didn't want to take early shots. We don't want to get out there. Even if you're wide open, do not take the early shot. Get the ball moving. Wait. Make them run around the floor. And we did, you know, I told my players I thought that they did a better job of, of controlling tempo than my senior-laden team last year. You know, I was begging my team last year to have a good tempo, and, and they didn't. And this, this team actually listened and, and ran a good tempo. You know, Glenville creates a lot of turnovers, and they, and they match near their average tonight with 27. But only in the last maybe three minutes did they have back-to-back -back turnovers. You, you really got away from that where it just didn't spiral in their direction. Well, the thing about the turnovers, too, is when we did have a turnover, it wasn't into a basket. Like, we might have turned it over, but it was, like, out of bounds in our front court. Very rarely did it end up into an easy layup for them, and I think that's the big thing that we were, were trying to stay away from. We didn't want them to have easy layups. So, I mean, for, you know, every time I look out there at three freshmen, I'm like, oh, my gosh, three freshmen, two sophomores, you know, three sophomores, two freshmen, or something like that. And, and, and for as young as we are to handle that pressure, I think that was amazing. The uh, loss to Seton Hill kind of take us through that, Coach, uh, the 17-point loss on Saturday. Uh, what what kind of just uh, philosophy did you have going into yesterday's practice? Well, you know, I knew that we needed to change our thought process. I mean, what was happening is, is we just didn't feel good about ourselves. And, um, you know, when your energy is that low, you've got to change something. So we spent a lot of time yesterday, we spent an hour in our locker room doing a, a, a gratitude circle. We just had each player had an opportunity to listen to 19 people say, I'm grateful for you because of this. And we spent an hour doing that. And what it did is it made people feel better about themselves, and it changed our energy. And so we came out tonight feeling better about who we were, and that's why we won. I mean, it had nothing to do with tactics, <laughs> had nothing to do with practice. That's it had everything to do with them feeling better about who they are. Just them believing. Yep. It's amazing. It go like that within 48 hours and I know <laughs> you've been in this a long time you you've seen it and uh, but you got to be in, inspired by it as well well I'm really inspired by the fact that you know we played so poorly for three games in a row and we, you know we felt bad about ourselves and we thought there was no way out and um, and then for them to turn around and feel good about this you know, I mean that's that's a growing process but they've got to feel great they've just been a great team team is going to you know top of the conference kind of team who just like rolled over West Liberty they have to feel good about what they just did as a unit I mean you know player for player they got to feel good about that right coach thanks for coming up we really appreciate it we'll see you on Thursday all right thank you thanks coach coach Wynn big upset tonight in the conference as Glenville State falls here to University of Charleston 86 84 Lauren Davis made a shot at the buzzer 10 feet in the corner and after Glenville State 
had missed their opportunity to go ahead 84 all. There was a time left on the game clock. They brought it to the midcourt line, called a timeout, and then uh, what did they have, Michael, about 20 seconds? A little bit less than that. Chrissy Keir called timeout with about 17 seconds left. Coach Wynn setting up a final play, and Glenville State did exactly what we thought coming out of that timeout, a real pass of 2-3 zone, but Charleston showed equal patience attacking that at the end. 